This is the time in our service where we love to remember the Lord's death, and we do so symbolically through bread and through juice. The fruit of the field and the fruit of the vine designed to implement or designed to uh, remind us of Jesus' body and his spilled blood in the place of sinners, the payment made for our forgiveness before a holy God. I want to turn your attention this morning to 1 Corinthians 11, a familiar text as we think about the Lord's table, and I'll read verse 26 out loud. We'll be looking at this together for a few moments in preparation to celebrate. As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. This is an interesting statement. If I told you that you were going to meet Abraham Lincoln and that he was going to tell you about being in Ford's theater and being shot by John Wilkes Booth. And in the meantime, before we had a coffee date with Abraham Lincoln, I was just going to tell you about it myself. That would be very odd. Let me tell you about his death until he comes is a strange sentence. It makes no sense in our earthly experience. It it makes no sense in human relations. And yet it is exactly what we must say about the Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate His death in memory of His death, but He is very much alive. And He is coming. And so one of the things that we do as we celebrate the Lord's table is we proclaim His death Until he comes. And don't let the strangeness of that wording elude us because it's so familiar. It becomes familiar. But we are proclaiming the death of a man who died on a cross 2,000 years ago. Who of of course was no mere man but God in the flesh sent to ransom us from sin. To set us free from slavery to sin and its consequences. To make us alive and rescue us from death itself. We proclaim his death. In the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He became the propitiatory sacrifice for sin. That is, he took our sin on himself. And took that sin in his body before God, before his Holy Father. So that the Father could pour out his infinite wrath on the Son of his love. As a substitute in our place. Jesus bore our sin with him to the cross and was punished for it. So that we may bear his righteousness as a free gift of grace. You don't deserve that. We don't deserve that. We could never earn that. You could never clean yourself up to merit it. You can't be religious enough to be liked by God so that he gives it to you. It is a free offer of his grace to his enemies who will believe and be found to be his friends, adopted into his family, heirs of his infinite inheritance for all of eternity. These things are too good to be true. They're too good for words. And yet the incredible realities of the gospel are where we hang our hope completely and totally as believers. So we come back to this table. Not as some magical thing that does something for us as we eat and drink, but as a memory, as a reminder, as a communal proclamation of what God has already accomplished in total on our behalf at the cross. And what a celebration it is. Christian, we come to this table as sinners forgiven with residual sin in us. And we come to the table of God's forgiveness and confess our sins. And God, who is faithful and just, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We're far more sinful than we know we are. We come and we examine our hearts and we confess what we know. And we cling to the forgiveness Jesus purchased at the cross already. There will be a few awkward moments after the elements are distributed of silence. Those moments are for you to meditate on the gospel, 
to think about your own sin, to recalibrate your heart toward the Lord, to confess any known sins you haven't addressed before the Lord and take Him to the throne of grace, find forgiveness in Christ. Those moments of silence are for you to examine your relationships horizontally with one another. And then we will take the elements. And this morning, I would ask that you hold on to the cup and hold on to the bread, and we'll take those together. There is an individual aspect to what we are doing. You alone before the Lord, your heart before Him, He sees everything you are exposed in these moments. Be honest with Him, be honest with yourself. And there is a community aspect to what we're doing. We are gathered here visibly, and we will take the Lord's table together corporately, communally, to proclaim something. And we are proclaiming, my hero died My Savior went to the cross, and He lives, and He's returning. That's what we do in these moments. So I'd invite the men to come forward now, distribute the the bread and the cup. Those trays will come around, take some. Take the next few moments of silence for heart preparation, self-examination, but hold on to those, and we'll take them together in a few moments.